We're here to answer your game, game your game night questions. Tonight's question comes from patron of the show, Brian Kurtz, who writes, you've had a lot of columns and podcasts to deal with certain types of games, gateway games, co-op games, games you can travel with, games with certain mechanics, etc. But I'm not recalling you specifically grouping games thematically. And my question is about that. We all played Clue when we were younger. What are some mystery themed games that are actually good? All right, thanks for the question, Brian. And of course, for supporting our show since the very beginning. Brian was actually our first ever Patreon patron and greatly appreciated. So one thing I do want to point out, I don't think Brian was trying to cut up Clue there. It's just the way it's worded is like, but that are actually good. Actually, I think Clue of all the mass market games is a pretty solid game that even gamers can enjoy. Now, the other thing I would do need to say is he's right uh we have not talked about mystery themed games and actually i don't think we have done really theme based podcasts before like we've never done a, a mars show and talked about the top 10 mars games so obviously I, I i don't even know if there's 10 i played or we haven't talked about underwater themed games though i think did we do sci-fi space I don't even think we've done that. So like our no, top I mean, sci-fi space th games. There is always the complaint that we don't de delve into theme, even in our reviews well enough. Yes, so, <laughs> that's true. <you> know. <laughs> we've gotten better at that. I now yeah. include right in the top section, just after I tell you who made the game, I give you an overview of the theme of the game and what it's about. So I have improved on that. You can tell I am a mechanics person, not a theme person. So anyway, good call on that. We have not talked about this. The thing is, the problem, and that's in quotes, is that I'm not a huge mystery theme fan. While I have played some mystery theme games, and I'm a fan of some of those ones I played, and I do have to say that's a subset, uh, it's just not something I'm huge into. Uh, Clue wasn't a game that I got into growing up. Though, again, it is one that I do now enjoy as an adult, but it was Deanna that introduced me to Clue, really. I did, like, I, I remember trying it as a kid, but not liking it. Now, what about you, Sean? Do you do any mystery gaming? Uh, now, I admit, as a kid, we actually played Clue quite a bit as a family. Okay. Uh, but while I enjoyed deduction and logic games, the mystery aspect is something that just doesn't do it for me. Fair enough. So due to our lack of experience with this theme, uh, we're gonna you're going to have to give me a bit of a leeway on our list tonight. So normally, I try to stick to games I own or have at least played, and then maybe have two or three honorable mentions that are games I haven't played. Well, tonight, what I am going to do, so the list isn't too short, is include some of the most popular mystery themed games based on places like Board Game Geek and other gaming media and other reviewers and other top 10, top 20 lists, Dice Tower, stuff like that. So we did our research to find what seems to be the most popular mystery games out there. It's tough to find a topic neither of us is especially up on, but That's we true. can't be on as experts at every genre. So before we do dive into our game recommendations, I thought it's worth taking a little bit to talk about what we mean by mystery games, just so we don't have people saying that is a mystery game, that isn't a mystery game, at least for us. So first thing I did is I went and looked for a mystery category on Board Game Geek, and they don't have mystery as its own. What they do have is murder mystery, which is what I used to search for popular games. So Board Game... Oh, sorry. <laughs> so Board Game Geek says... Murder mystery games often involve an unsolved murder or murders. A requirement of these games is usually for players to investigate these crimes and determine the criminal details and or perpetrators. I, well, it fits for murder games. That doesn't really tell you what types of games could be considered mystery games. Like, I don't think every mystery game has to be about a murder. For example, Oak Foxed is a mystery game that my kids owned and loved, and it's a fantastic deduction game, but the mystery is which fox stole a pie. Now, Board Game Geek also has a separate category for deduction games, because once I saw that, I was like, well, maybe I'm looking for deduction games, not mystery games. And well, that actually has a much more involved description. So deduction games are those that require players to form conclusions based on available premises. These games are quite varied, including several different types of logical reasoning. Cat and mouse games like Scotland Yard are a type of deduction game in which players use a set of observations and truthful feedback to narrow down possibilities and catch a constantly moving opponent at the right position. Mm. Elimination games like Clue expect players to arrive at the right conclusion after narrowing down possibilities from a large list. 
Okay. Signaling games like Werewolf allow for a set of observations and player-driven feedback, which may not be truthful, mm. to arrive at the right conclusion out of two or three main choices. Wow. Now, finally, this category includes induction games like Zendo, in which players must derive a general rule out of near infinite possibilities. Wow, does that ever feel like a board game geek entry where multiple people have gone in and edited it and added their favorite games? I, I, this, uh, it actually goes on. So that's only part of this. Um, there's another two paragraphs about social deduction games. And while I think we're going to skip over that subset of mystery games, because I think everyone knows my thoughts on those type of games. Indeed, while you can consider some of the mysteries, it's just not something we here appreciate enough to really give a fair review of. Yeah, you won't, you won't, you, you could, we could possibly do like the top five social deduction games Mo actually enjoys. That's, that's probably about as deep as it goes. So I, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff there that I don't know if it's a mystery. Scotland Yard, you're chasing someone around a board trying to find them. What are you solving? What's the mystery? The mystery is where are they? But they're moving every turn. I, uh, it's so, and, and Clue is an elimination game. I'm like, isn't that deduction is eliminating things till you have one left? Isn't that what deduction means? I wonder why they called it elimination instead of just deduction. And uh, Zendo, <laughs> guess it's a it's a uh, ice house game which if you know what ice house is it's you get a bunch of pieces and you're putting them on the board based on a rule like all yellow points pieces must point to blue and blah 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 and people keep making patterns they're like nope that doesn't fit the rule and it's kind of like um mastermind right and i'm like I, that one I, of all of them yeah i guess that's a mystery right like what's the rule so that one i can see but like I, i'm i just there's an overlap here right what's the difference between a mystery game and a deduction game and I honestly, I wish Brian was with us, with us in the chat room. I was hoping that we'd get him out by uh, tagging him on our Discord, but it didn't work tonight. I'm sure he's busy. He's doing whatever, hanging out with his kids, which is fine. But I would like to know what he thinks is a mystery game before we recommended stuff. Because Board Game Geek obviously thinks there's a difference. Not just in those definitions we read out, but in what games are listed in each category. So the top three mystery games on Board Game Geek are Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition, Sherlock Holmes Consulting the Detective, and Detective of Modern Crime Board Game. The deduction list, though, is Battlestar Galactica, Decrypto, and Codenames. And those other games aren't even on the list. So based on the game list at BGG, I gotta, we have to use, the I think, the Murdy Mystery version as the games on that list is what enters my mind when you say mystery. And while Battlestar Galactica, I don't know how much of a mystery that one is. And Codenames, there's no mystery there. Although I think you can certainly argue for Battlestar Galacta as it's a mystery who the Cylon is. I admit, when I first read it, that's what I thought. But the game's not actually about finding out who the Cylon is. What the game is about is the humans trying to get to Earth over so many turns and dealing with all kinds of problems, and the Cylon's trying to stop that from happening. Because you can play a six-hour game of Battlestar Galactica where in the first 10 minutes, someone guesses the Cylon and is proved correct because of a, a card. So you, you've you solved the mystery already, but you still get to keep playing. So maybe I think the end result of the game is you answer a question. The mystery is solved at the finish as opposed to it has a mystery in it. In fact, one definition of the word mystery is something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. So explaining it or trying to would be the game, a, a question, right. a problem or any unknown. All right, I think that's about probably about as close as we're going to get to a firm definition. Like anytime we start talking about definitions, obviously it's up to interpretation. But I think the main thing is we need something we need to solve. In the end, you're trying to find a person or a reason or a thing or both, right? Uh, especially with murders, it's usually who did it and why did they do it or how did they do it? But it's going back to clue. So we're looking for something where the end result is you have, you have to explain the mystery, you have to explain the process. So let's go down to make some game suggestions, and I'm sure we'll get some feedback on these. So my inbox is ready, mo at tabletopbellhop.com, though I'd love it even better if you comment on social media, because that appeases the algorithm. So as usual, these games are in no particular list, except I did put them in a couple buckets, uh, but like the, the numbered order doesn't matter here. Now, these are games I personally have played and really enjoyed. Starting with my first game on the list is Hidden Games Crime Scene Case Number One 
The Canadian version of which is called the Maple Brook case, but it is localized for 11 different countries. So this was the game that popped into my head when I first read this question from Brian. When I was trying to decide what to talk about, I'm like, oh, it's got to be crime scene. Like, that's definitely a murder mystery. This is one of many of the open case style mystery games where there's an unsolved case out there. Uh, there's a number of these games that are based on actual unsolved cases. Um, then there's ones with made up cases. This was made up. This is where you either either you pick up the game in this particular case, they mail something to your house or you go buy the envelope at the at your local game store and you open it up and you get all the evidence to solve the case. Now, another example of this would be Escape Mail, which is one of the ones I tried out and have reviewed over on the blog and many of the mystery boxes that you can get sent every month, like Crate Joy, uh, which we do have an affiliate for Crate Joy to be um, fully uh, opaque or opaque, sorry, clear, fully clear here. Um, there are a ton on Escape Mail. Like if you are interested in trying out these kind of games, uh, sorry, on Crate Joy, um, let me know and I'll get you an affiliate link to check out the Crate Joy stuff. Now, all of the different ones we've tried, the Hidden Games Crime Scene series, which comes out of Germany, was the most enjoyable and rewarding. And that was the Hidden Games Crime Scene, starting with case number one in Canada, the Maple Grove case. Next, I have Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion, a Coded Chronicles game. Now, every Scooby-Doo story, the goal, the end result is to solve the mystery and unmask the villain. And in this escape room in a box style game is no exception. That's exactly what you're doing. Now this uses the coded chronicle system from Jay and Sen that involves using different characters to interact with different things that generates you a four digit number that you look up in a book. Now of the coded chronicle games we played, this one is so far the best. We had a fantastic experience with the whole family on this one. This is actually my kid's favorite game they've ever played with us. Now, sadly, the Shining version that came out after wasn't nearly as good, and you can read our review to find out why. Now, what I'm really looking forward to is we've got a copy of the Goonies one on its way that should show up any day. And that was Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion, a Coded Chronicles game. Next, we're going to stick to the word Chronicles, I guess, is Chronicles of Crime 1400. Now, we had the pleasure of getting to preview this one when it was... Uh, live on Kickstarter, and I was extremely impressed. Now, this is an app-integrated game, and the app is integral to this. It's, it's mostly app with some cards. They made brilliant use of QR codes and cards and a bit of AR to let you th go through a series of medieval mysteries, which, of course, included some murders. Now, there is, of course, a number of games in the series, starting with the original Chronicles of Crime, the next one was Chronicles of Crime Noir, and then there was the Millennium series. That's what 1400 is part of. Now, I haven't personally gone back and played any of the originals, but I have heard from fans of the series that each new set has improved on the others, that Noir is way better than the original, and the Millennium series is even more better than Noir. So I don't know if you should go all the way back to the roots of this series, but I do strongly suggest checking out the Millennium series of Chronicles of Crime games. And that was Chronicles of Crime... 1400. Next, I have Mysterium. This is a very unique game where there has been a murder and one player takes on the role of a ghost trying to help the other players solve that murder. And I think you're playing the murdered victim. I, I've never actually read the rules for this game. I've only played it. Now, this game uses Dixit style cards, which are, are tarot sized cards with whimsical abstract artwork. And these are the only tools the ghost has to give the other players clues. Now, my issue with this one is this game seems to be very group dependent, and I played in a great game, and I played in a not so great one, and the problem was the players, and a lot of it has to do where it seems like every group that owns this has their own house rules for what is and isn't allowed, and that way it reminds me of Hanabi, where when you play with one group, they like will put cards on top of others to block parts off, or they'll tap certain parts of the cards as the ghost, and so on. Overall, it does have a very unique system and can be enjoyable with the right group of players. And personally, I think if you stick to the, the core rules, which is just you put a card on the table and say nothing and sit back and like cross your arms and try not to react, it's more enjoyable that way. Other groups are going to play it differently. Now, what I haven't tried personally is Mysterium Park. This is the latest re-implementation of Mysterium, which reviewers seem to be enjoying more than the original. 
when I looked at it today, the board game geek ratings were the same. I couldn't tell you which one's better, but if you are thinking of digging into these, you might want to look into both. Mr. Embark is definitely the more, the most recently released. And that was Mysterium. Next, I have Tragedy Looper. Now, this is such an odd game that it's hard to describe, but it's all about figuring out what tragedy is about to happen and taking steps to prevent it. Note, not all the tragedies are someone dies. Now, an odd aspect of this game is that it's one versus Medini, but competitive. One player is trying to make sure the tragedy happens, whereas the other players are trying to prevent it. And the neat bit is the players that are trying to prevent it start playing the game, and then the tragedy happens, and then they restart from the beginning. And that's the loop part, right? It's a time travel game. This is in a way that the players then get to try again and then try different things to see what happens. And there's two parts of the mystery here, because first, you have to figure out what the tragedy is. And then second, you have to figure out what steps you have to take to prevent it. Now, this game does have a pretty steep learning curve due to the strangeness of the mechanics. So I only recommend this one for experienced gamers. This should not be a gateway game. This shouldn't be your first uh, mystery experience or your first time travel game. I have to say, Tragedy Looper really sounds like the name of, the, of so, like a nickname you've given a game that just mm. it's it's a horrible game and it just keeps going over and over again. <laughs> it sounds more like a bad nickname for a game than a real name for an actual mystery game. Tragedy Looper. Totally fair. It's 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 it's, it's misery farm where you have to play multiple games of Agricola in a row and it just keeps steamrolling. Totally get it. All right, next is Android. So here I go, recommending a game that no one's going to be able to find or get. But it is worth trying to hunt down Android if you want a very cool mystery board gaming experience that's different from anything else I play. Now, this is a game set in Fantasy Flight's Android world, right? From Android Netrunner and some other other games. It's a very popular world. There's even novels out there about the Android world. And in this game... You are, in, in my opinion, playing Blade Runner. You are playing through a Philip K. Dick story. You are in sci-fi. You're on a planet. There's a space elevator that goes up to the colonies in space. You've got your own hover car. And you are traveling around trying to solve a murder in this setting. Now, this involves deduction. There's puzzle solving, including actual physical puzzles. You put together and put pieces together different ways to connect things. There's a really unique mechanic in this game where the murderer is not determined at the start of the game. It's determined during play by putting different targets on people and stuff. Like This is a wonky, long game that has a ton going on, but is super thematic and cool. Because the other thing is this is noir. And of course, your investigator has personal issues and dealing with your personal issues is a big part of the game and how much you focus on your own wellness versus it, all of this tossed into it, right? The problem is it's a game length issue. It's a very long, hard to learn game. And one of the things I found people hated about this game is that it's possible that your potential suspect, the one you want to be, is killed off early in the game. So your goal at the beginning can't possibly happen. But what you don't realize, the people who don't like this, is that it's not just about solving the case, because this is actually also a Euro, and it's about earning points in the way, along the way. So you can actually win the game without solving the murder. I honestly think, like, I unfortunately, I sold this because people who hated it were people in my regular game group, and they swore they'd never play it again. And now I miss it. This is, this is one of my biggest shames that I got rid of a game, and I should have kept it. Like, the different cars you drove, the one, the one character had a garbage cars so it moved for less and you moved your car with a protractor around the map and then and the high end car had a bigger arc like there was just so much going on in this game so if you can find it i think it's worth picking it up and that was android if you can find it and that's it um that's all i've got for the top mystery games i personally have played and enjoyed so now for the rest of the list, what we're going to do is talk about some of the best mystery game recommendations I could find while doing research for this topic. So number one is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, specifically the Thames murder and other cases. Now, besides being the top of almost every best mystery game list I looked at, this one has also been personally recommended by, to me by local gamer and bellhop patron Jeff Seuss. 
And Jeff and I seem to share pretty similar tastes when it comes to board games and RPGs and the type of stories we like to tell at the table. Now, Board Game Geek does seem to back this up. This is the number two rated mystery game on the site, and it's just, just missing the top 100 board games. But I looked earlier, it was at 109. The neat bit that appeals to me in this game is that you have multiple, it's like eight cases, so a significant number of cases, and at the end, you get a score, and you can rank yourself versus homes and see what you missed and what homes caught and what 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 gaps of logic you had and what leaps of faith Sherlock supposedly was able to make. And no no one out there is going to beat Sherlock. And if anyone claims they did, I, I don't know. I, that's that reminds me of people tell me they play power grid with their six-year-old. Well, it may be true and good on you. I, I gotta admit I doubt it. And if you think you're much as Skilled is the great one himself. That is Sherlock Holmes, consulting detective. Next, I have Mythos Tales, which just to make the fans of the Brawling Brothers Goward Game podcast happy, the Mythos Tales. As expected from the name, this is based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft and has players take on the role of investigators in 1920s Arkham. It includes eight different cases for the players to try to solve. Now this I put next because similar to Consulting Detective, you end up comparing your final score to Armitage. And Armitage is a famous investigator in many of Lovecraft's books. Um, you see how you rank up against this famous mythos detective. Now I say, not being a big Lovecraft fan, I never gave this game a second look. If I see a Cthulhu theme, I literally don't even dig any deeper than that. I had no clue that this was like a mystery you can solve eight different cases. And I got to admit, I'm tempted because solving mythos cases sounds way cooler to me than solving real life-based crimes. I have, I, I play board games to escape. I don't want to solve a murder at the local fair. I would much rather find out who was the cultist than I would, or who's trying to summon a demon in their basement. <laughs> And if you want to uh, leave reality for your mysteries, that was Mythos Tales or Mythos Tales. Yes. <laughs> Every time they said Mythos Tales, and it was like this high pitched, throw me nuts. Next, I have Paranormal Detectives. This is the newest game on this list, came out in the middle of the pandemic. So I think this probably would have had a lot more buzz had it come out during con season. So this seems to be the next step from Mysterium to me. And I probably should check. Maybe it's even the same designer because it does sound very similar. So again, there's been a murder. One player is playing the ghost. All the other players, though, are investigators. But this time, they're paranormal investigators. They are using their powers to question the ghost. And the ghost is limited in how they can answer. So instead of just Mysterium, you play a card. They have all kinds of different things they can do, including playing a card, tarot-sized cards, similar. They can create word puzzles. They can touch the detectives, which no, not something you want to do during a pandemic. Specifically, and I like this one, you can have a detective pick up a pencil and then you guide their arm to draw something. That sounds really cool. And then there's also a Ouija board where they can use the Ouija board to send things. Like there are actually nine different ways the ghost can communicate and none of them, of course, are talking. Now, this sounds interesting. I really want to try this one once it's safe to play games and interact and actually touch each other while we're playing games. This sounds really cool. This sounds awesome compared to Mysterium. This sounds like taking it to that next level. And that was Paranormal Detectives, which doesn't, in fact, share a designer. No, okay. I, it just seems like the logical next step. It's I'm showing them cards. I'm like, well, how about instead of cards, you can do this or you can hum a song or I didn't look up at all the nine different ones. I looked up at some of them more. All right, next, I have my final game on the list tonight. This is one I know someone in our chat room is a fan of, and that is Detective, a modern crime board game. Now, I saw this game on every single mystery game list out there, sometimes taking the highest spot. Usually it was in there, in the mix, and it was there everywhere. Like every time I looked at a list, it was in there somewhere. Seeing the number of awards it was nominated for, which is a huge list with four wins, makes me think this is a solid recommendation without having to try it myself. Now, as you can guess from the title, this is about using modern resources to solve modern day crimes, which I get again, that's what kept me away. I, again, I want escapism. I don't want to solve modern crimes. I don't want to think about what could happen in real life. 
Now, what this really involves is a lot of tech. You get access to a database that, that they've set up and you go on the web and you can look stuff up and there's email addresses you can email that'll email you back. Like this is using modern technology to present a modern crime board game. Now, what it looks like is there was a 2020 reprint of this game called the Game of the Year Edition. This seems to be the one you want to seek out if you want to play modern or detective a modern crime board game. All right, there you go. So if you like the modern current state of the art, that is Detective, a modern crime board game. All right, I do have three honorable mentions, uh, including a mix of games I played and ones I've read about or know about. Okay, number one is Mansions of Madness. This is the number one mystery game on Board Game Geek. It was also on many top lists, often taking the top spot. But this one does not feel like a mystery to me at all. Like, it's an app-driven game. And yes, you start in the middle of a house and you don't know what to do. So there's a mystery there. You're like, I don't know why I'm here or what I'm doing. But like, stop the cultists before they summon a thing. And if you don't, you have to fight it. Doesn't feel like a mystery at all. Like, I, like I, there's mysteries there and there are things you have to figure out. But it's almost more of a miniature game, remembering you check all the places to get the right tools to fight the thing and then win the die rolls. Like, I have a real hard time recommending this as a mystery game. That said, there is deduction elements, there are puzzle elements, and it's a fantastic game. And one of the best app-integrated games I've played. But I just, to me, it doesn't seem like a mystery to me. Fair enough. And that was Mansions of Madness. Next, I have Deception Murder in Hong Kong. This is a high player count, hidden trader board game for up to 12 players that plays in about 20 minutes, thus making it completely different from every other game on this list. And I think in a way for a good reason. Uh, Now one player takes on the role of the forensic scientist. They know the answer to the murder, but they can only express clues to the players through the use of these scene cards or tiles where they're putting things out and things on them. Now, another player is the killer who tries to hide their role, but they're mixed in with the rest of the players. You don't know who the killer is. And then as you add other player counts, there's also like the witness and the accomplice and so on. So you definitely got some werewolf vibes going on here. Now, I played this one, and it's a good, quick, big group party game, but it's all social deduction. It's trying to figure out who that murderer is, and it greatly relies on the skill of the forensic scientist to pass across information. It wasn't my taste. And again, I don't know if I consider this a mystery. Like there's a murder, but it's all about social deduction and sussing out who the killer is, not figuring out their motive or the weapon or any of that stuff. I know to me, it's a social deduction game, not a mystery game. I think a lot of people would consider that a mystery game, I have to say. Uh, It's just that it's a social deduction game, so not really our cup of tea. (laughs) Definitely not. But that was Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. Finally, number 13, because I thought that was a good number for a murder mystery night game recommendation episode. I have Letters from Whitechapel. This is the Scotland Yard from above, but modernized, right? This is a one versus many board game set in London, 1888. One player is playing Jack the Ripper, trying to take five victims before being caught by the other players playing the police. While I found this on many murder mystery game lists, it doesn't seem like a mystery to me at all. You know who the villain is. It's Jack. You know what they're trying to do and how to do it. They're trying to kill five people. The game is about stopping that from happening. So I I, I personally wouldn't count this. But again, this was on all kinds of other people's top mystery game lists. I think maybe if it's a murder mystery game list, they just went with that murder part of it and ignored the mystery part. Yeah, it's it's a very tough one and it's a tough line. I mean, arguably police solving crimes could be considered mystery, even if they know who it is. The fact that they haven't got enough information to solve it yet could be considered that. But depending on uh, your point of view, you could try Letters from Whitechapel. Now, Letters from Whitechapel, I do want to call out, there is an updated version that has been released. It has a bit better board game geek rating, and it is called Whitehall Mystery. So if you are interested in checking out Letters for Whitechapel and trying to catch Jack or escape as Jack, check out Whitehall Mystery. Well, that's it for our list of mystery-themed board game suggestions. 
We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. If you got a question for us, head over to the website and click on Ask the Bellhop or email questions at tabletopbellhop.com.